Okay, here's an overview of two General Electric two-way radios uh, from the late 1980s and to mid-90s period. This is a General Electric Master Delta two-way FM VHF radio. And next to it here, I've got a Ranger GE Master. I don't think it's, it was called Master by then. It was just called Ranger uh, Low Band uh, 35 to 50 megahertz radio. Both of these can be uh, modified to uh, amateur radio use and they can be had very inexpensively these days. You can usually get them at a ham swap meet, ham fest for like twenty dollars. <laughs> I wouldn't wouldn't put out too much more because uh, believe me they're out there cheap. So I'll get a quick uh, look inside here. This the Delta has a cover that pulls off like that. It can be locked. There's a key here and luckily uh, it's unlocked because I don't have a key yet but I'm going to be getting one. The outer case is all made of aluminum. You've got this board that's upside down here. It's like a daughter board plugged into the motherboard down below. It's the uh, PL tone. They call it channel guard in the GE world encoder and decoder board is up here and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and looking down inside here you can get a look this PC board here is pretty much the uh, little microcomputer CPUs here the uh, memory chip which is an EEPROM or EEPROM erasable programmable read-only memory and this is what you have to program it has these pins sticking up out of them, out of the board um, for certain programmers, but we're not going to use those for programming these. And behind that you've got the uh, the synthesis, the, uh, sorry, the transmit receive synthesizer board. And the two adjustments you have to make on these radios, these are wide band radio so there's not lots of stages that you have to tune the microprocessor pretty much selects the uh, tune circuit combinations that you need to achieve the the frequency that you're going to be using but you do have to adjust the VCO and one of them is there and one of them is here and uh, when I do the mod on one of these radios on another one I'll I'll show you uh, the receiver front end is here helical resonators um, again I haven't adjusted anything else on here and I'll get the PA cover open and show inside of that okay so here's a look at the power amplifier board this is a 40 watt radio so you can see here it has a pair of blank spaces for the, uh, the I believe the 100 watt model of this radio they did make a 100 watt model of the high band radio and you can tell that it's a hundred watt by the fins on the heat sink uh, they'll be longer than the hundred watt radio but uh, you know we've got one output transistor and it looks like maybe a driver and on this board you would set your output power here so once you have the radio up and running you adjust that pot for the rated power that you want and on the outside of the radio, of course, you've got the uh, antenna connector, lock, the locking mechanism, and the, uh, the connector with the control cable. And normally, this part of the radio would be mounted, it was a, designed as a mobile radio, so it would be mounted in your trunk. And you'd have a control cable that would come up, and I have the equipment for that. This, this stuff's pretty grubby. It's a test setup that I got um, I actually got for free it was it was uh, in one of those piles in a ham fest of stuff that they're just giving away they want to get rid of <laughs> so you got the control cable all wadded up here but it's about 15 feet long or so and they made a number of control heads that are pretty much interchangeable I believe this is an S600 it's an 8 channel control head uh, this is a 550 um, this one is actually just a parts one that I have around, but to give you an idea, it has a scan capability 
on the head. Now they made a, an 850 that uh, could do something like 128 channels, I believe. I think you could do eight banks of 16 channels each. And it would download that chip in the radio each time you change to a different bank. And here's a look at it. I believe this is the S600. And it says Delta S synthesized. They're all interchangeable um, pretty much, it seems like. Now, I'm sure there's some experts out there that might chime in with uh, any limitations. I'll go ahead and give a demonstration of the radio and transmit and receive. Okay, so I have the radio powered up. You'll need a 12-volt power supply. Uh, for this model of radio, probably uh, 8 amps or so will do, but for a uh, full power one, you'll need one over 20 amps. So, uh, have the control head set up on channel 2. You got your squelch volume and uh, 8 channels to select from. And let's give a demonstration of the receive with my handheld here. Test 1, 2, 3. There's your receive on simplex 14655, and then into the dummy load transmitting now. If I can get that to come in, this old uh, Philco Sierra watt meter, it's coming up just shy of 50 watts. Okay, so also a note about band splits for this radio. Uh, they made two for the VHF high band. They made a 136 to 153 megahertz split that, I mean, would be ideally the one you'd want for a two meter ham band, but there weren't very many customers for that. And most people bought this one, which is the 150 to 174 megahertz split. And, um, to get it to work, like I say, you have to reprogram it, and you have to adjust the uh, transmit and receive VCOs to get them within the proper range so it'll operate. Well, this one almost got to the right range, and just by adjusting the cores uh, on these all the way down on on this one, I believe is near the bottom. But anyway, uh, it works as is. They some other folks in the in the Yahoo group for these radios was saying that you had uh, one of the VCO coils with a 10 picofarad capacitor, which makes sense. That would lower the resonant frequency and bring it down more. But uh, honestly, I mean, I find it's working fine as is. I could do that. I'd have to tear this radio all apart to do that. I'm going to run it as is. I'm within a volt to where I need to be, and we'll see how stable it is. If I start having all kinds of stability issues when we get cold weather and it starts coming unlocked, then I'll have to deal with it then. But uh, also there's a little um, a light-emitting diode here, and it will light up when the radio is out of lock. So that's sort of your PLL status indicator. So that's a quick overview of the Delta. So moving on to the GE Ranger uh, mobile radio, this is what came after the Delta. This was made in Japan, I believe by uh, JRC, Japan Radio Company. And I almost have to say, I mean, the construction is just as rugged, but maybe even a little more rugged by virtue of the design. You see you have this massive uh, aluminum casting, and I mean, look at the the thickness of the uh, the metal there and it's literally that thick in the base there too you can't really see it but let me look at this heat sink this is a high power low band radio that I have modded already for six meter hand band and it works quite well on the cover you also got another one of these cast aluminum covers this beautiful construction here and they've <laughs> they've actually uh, stitched in or pushed in a uh, if I can show it here a uh, metallic bonding like ribbon across it which presses up I guess against this uh, part of the radio here dividing these two uh, compartments from each other again you've got kind of a 
pretty understandable layout. Your control cable plugs in here. It, it will use the same control cable as the Ranger antenna here. This is a uh, Torx screw you will need with this radio. You'll need to buy a set of Torx screwdrivers at least uh, to take these uh, screws out to get the cover off. Uh, sometimes the lock was an option on these, um, so sometimes you'll run into them with the lock here. Inside you've got the ribbon cables which transfer the uh, connections from the control cable in here to the uh, synthesizer board and your CPU is in here. The uh, EE Prawn chip is the same one used in the Delta. So you got 16 memories on board. You can add another IC socket and another IC and expand it to 32 memories. Um, you can also do the same thing with the Delta, but on the Delta it uh, piggybacks, it rides on those pins above the existing uh, EEPROM that's already in there. And then up here you have your VCO module. These come, it says the module is factory tuned and does not require field adjustment, and that's true, but if you want to take it up into six meters, you have to do that. Uh, there's a 13.2 megahertz reference oscillator for the PLL, your VCO adjustments. Um, so I had to poke these out and, and adjust them, and I'll go into how to do that on another video. So here's the underside of the Ranger. You've got the uh, transmit PA board here. This is a high power one, so it's uh, it's got a driver transistor feeding a pair of 2SC 2782s. It looks like uh, a matching transformer and uh, output filter assembly, transmit receive uh, switch relay, antenna switching relay. And over here is the uh, exciter, transmit exciter, 100 milliwatt output here into the PA. All of this stuff, Ranger and probably Delta, I found it to be extremely reliable. I don't think I've ever bought a Ranger that didn't work. Uh, this one's from 1994, and I'm not sure if I said, but the Delta is from 1987. So that kind of gives you an idea of the the age range and I'll file I'll connect it up to the uh, control cable here and do a quick uh, test transmission and demo of the power output and power usage okay I've got the six meter radio powered up on the bench here the control cables connected uh, the uh, receiver is on channel 152.525 megahertz there's your receive squelch channel 1 your volume, all the same as before. They got this big chunky uh, microphone, and uh, on the the mobile installation, you would install this very heavy-duty mic clip, which has a switch built in. And uh, this particular one, the switch is designed for the. Uh, channel guard or PL tone uh, squelch receive so that when you the idea is when you take the mic out of the holder if you didn't know this it will uh, remove the PL decoding on the receive the idea being that if the frequency was in use by say another you know agency another police department you'd hear them on the the frequency and, and know to stand by until they were done because they used to do some frequency sharing in the commercial bands way back when before trunking but you know digital trunking kind of eliminated all of that so it's hooked up into the dummy load and I'll do a quick transmit there's your hundred watts and I could probably get more out of it and on the amp meter here it'll focus I'm getting a you know a good solid 20 amp uh, load there if not more it's dropping down the regulator about half a volt so it's a limit of what that power supply can do so there's the, uh, the six meter Ranger um, Rangers and Deltas are also available in a UHF if you want to get active on 440 it's an inexpensive way to do that 
Now, uh, there's a lot of these on the market right now, particularly the Rangers. And the reason being is that recently, uh, been the last couple years, the uh, commercial two-way radio band has gone, from, the analog radio systems have gone from wide band to narrow band. So this is a five kilohertz deviation radio. What's it? What's called a wide band radio now, and most of the commercial world's gone to two and a half kilohertz. So there's a lot of equipment like this that's just going to be junked. It's going to be sent to a scrapper, you know, and cut up and melted down. So, you know, see what you can do to save these radios. They're worth uh, saving. Also wanted to say I wouldn't, you know, spend too much on these. I mean, I know they're probably even at fifty bucks. There's still a pretty good radio, but if you start getting into, you know, paying serious money for these, you can kind of get a synthesized ham rig, you know, for uh, for the same money. So that's my suggestion anyway. If you want to use these, use them on a budget. Also, you need to build a, um, what's called an RIB, what they call in the two-way industry, a radio interface box. And this is a home brew one that you can build from a, and it looks kind of a mess because I got a lot of wires here that aren't being used. But basically, at one end of it, you've got a parallel port which you plug into your computer in order to do the programming of the radio. At the other end, I've got the a control cable that I've connected eight wires to. And so when I'm going to program, I just plug it into here, connect the other end of the board to the computer, and uh, send a what's basically a 256 byte file hex file into this uh, EEPROM here. It's called an X2212 EEPROM and I'll show uh, how we do that in the radio modification video where we take one of these from the commercial band down into the hand band. 